if you looked at the world and uh, you saw it only as solid and only as it appears to be, and then you look at the situation we're in, you think we've got no bloody chance because you think, well, it's going to take so long to change anything, but it's not. The world is a manifestation of human perception. It's, it's a human perception made manifest. That's all it is. And when we change perception, the world changes. For instance, if um, human perception said, not following the rules anymore, you've been lying to us for a year, and I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. And if people did it, it's unenforceable. Because this cult only has the power we give it. The few can't control the vast many, unless the vast many give their power to the few. It's impossible. So that's where the answer lies. And, and to take our power back or stop giving it away, we need to change our perception. Otherwise, we'll just go on giving it away like, like, like we always have. What happens is people can look at the situation and it can be overwhelming to them because it seems so complex. You know, people think that understanding complexity is uh, like genius. Well, I'm not like that maybe. But the real genius for me is seeing the simple and apparently complex because the complex is, is covering up the simple. If you break it down and break it down and break it down, you go beyond the families, you go beyond all of it and all the levels of form and you're left with this state of consciousness that wants to control, and wants to uh, do all the things that's going on now and a state of consciousness doesn't want that. And that's what it breaks down to. And um, uh, if people get attached to this, well, we're going to carry on as we are. If people break away from this to this, then we're going to bring it down. There is a certain information field uh, which they want to retain. And uh, it's an information field that basically processes information in a particular way. It has no empathy. It has no compassion. And this cult, if you like, doesn't want that information field diluted because you start interbreeding with people who are not of that information field, well, that information field starts to get diluted and it starts to become open to other things. It starts processing information in a different way and, the, and the, basically the cult starts to fall apart because it's based on a network of psychopaths. Uh, I've said many times the dynamic between the cult and humanity is in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. They have to keep humans blind, so with their one eye, their all-seeing eye, they, um, they can control by benefit of having a level of knowledge that the public doesn't have. But if um, humanity, as humanity, wakes up to its true power and starts connecting into uh, levels of awareness where the answers lie, where the insight lies, where knowledge lies, um, etc., then the dynamic will change. The one-eyed man is no match for the two-eyed, uh, third-eyed human. And that's why they have to keep humanity asleep so that their one eye can prevail. People don't censor to the scale that they do because they're secure people. They do it because they're not secure. They're incredibly insecure because they know that once enough of humanity wake up, it's over. It's over for them. And they're terrified of that. They're actually telling us that they don't have power. Otherwise, they won't worry about people like me. So that's very, very important that people realize that. They don't fall into this idea of, oh, they're so powerful, what chance we got? Well, uh, there's much chance we can want to take uh, is the answer to that. When people say, you know, that it's all about money, well, only to a point. It's about control. And so the idea is that if you create a society in which money dictates choice, then you control the choice of the people by controlling their access to money, which in, in our society overwhelmingly dictates choice. And if you, um, if you look at um, what freedom is, freedom is the ability to make choices. And if you can suppress the number of choices that people can make, you are suppressing their freedom. The basic structure 
of society that they want uh, is very close to what um, we would call uh, Marxism. Uh, and that's what that's what um, that the woke mentality is about. It's about demanding Marxism. But of course, Marxism is for the people. It's not for the elite. Why would the uh, the financial elite want Marxism? Because Marxism is just a, a method for controlling the masses. We've got to start redefining the nature of the I. Because if you're self-identifying with the labels of a human life and you're seeing yourself in those limited terms the three score years and ten then this is going to get very very challenging to say the least and it's going to get very frightening but if you see yourself as the consciousness having an experience the labels are your experiences they're not you in terms of the eternal i that is consciousness and whatever happens in this in this reality we will continue journey of consciousness and and if you can see that this is just a brief experience rather than all experience and all existence it's brief experience and if you can come from that point of view then you can look at it in a different way and it doesn't seem so overwhelming and when you open that that doesn't have fear because that knows for a start what I've just said, that we are eternal expressions of consciousness and therefore this is just a brief experience. And once you let go of, of fear, you let go also of considering consequences for doing what you know to be right. Because if, if ever there was a time when we need to do what we know to be right, it's now. But if you consider consequences then your your head certainly your emotion will give you a long list of reasons not to do what you know to be right and so you'll you'll say well i'll do something but i'll do it next week or i'll do it next month and, and i tell you what if it comes to this then i'll do something and then it comes to it and you don't and we just go on down the road to greater and greater dystopia but we're at a point now where we we just have to stand up and say no not doing it and to do that that has to be open because if that's not open then you're going to be terrorized into um, into conformity this doesn't consider consequences because to consider consequences is to consider not doing what you know to be right and this would never do that this would this won't so what do i need to do to to make a difference well first of all bottom line you must not concede to fascism well whatever the consequences are because once you appease it by just going along with it a bit then you'll appease it a bit more because you can't appease tyranny because it, it always wants more no matter what you give it so you say oh, okay I'll, I'll, I'll just do this bit I'll just do this bit then it wants more and it wants more and eventually it's got everything and, and that's what's where we're going. We're going down a road, if we go on in this way, where they're going to strip uh, humanity of everything, not just possessions, not just uh, the ability to make choices, but, but strip them of the most basic self-respect. And self-respect is the key because it's self-respect that's brought down every tyranny in history. Oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to do this, and do that. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing that, I'm not doing any of it. I won't do any of it. Because I will not concede my self-respect to this tyranny, I won't do it. I'd rather leave. I'd rather leave, I, I, I'm not going to, because there are, other, there are other forces at work here. But I would rather do that than concede my self-respect, because once self-respect's gone, all that's left is, is submission. It's your self-respect that stops you submitting. 